Thank you. I'll uh, ask the first question. Um, while the U.S.-India policy uh, has been a pretty healthy one, and our security relations have improved dramatically over the last 15 years, I don't believe that our uh, economic relationship has, has quite kept pace. Uh, U.S.-India economic ties and experts uh, encourage both supporting India's membership in APEC and uh, concluding a bilateral investment treaty in a recent hearing that I chaired about uh, India and the U.S. economic ties. There's strong support uh, here in the Congress for India's entry into APEC, and I've introduced a bill to that end, and Senator Cornyn uh, released a, a companion bill just within the last uh, week or so. The administration has maintained that it welcomes India's interest in APEC. Where do we stand on negotiations for a bilateral investment treaty, and what else are we doing uh, from the administration's perspective to improve economic ties? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me first uh, thank you and commend and welcome the leadership that you um, and, and many of your colleagues have shown on the U.S.-India relationship and the ambition that you have injected into that partnership in terms of, of where uh, you would like to see it go. Uh, I think that that has been an important voice and it, uh, it has been much noted and appreciated. Um, I do think that, as you noted, that the President has welcomed India's interest on APEC. I think that uh, the size of the Indian economy makes it one that, uh, that we want to engage with and engage with in uh, an ambitious but constructive way. Uh, there are uh, a multiplicity of views uh, with respect to India's entry into APEC. And, Largely, the, the conversation is around better understanding India's desire for membership in APEC and India's uh, approach and philosophy as it, as it comes into a largely economically focused body uh, on important issues of, uh, of, of, of open, free, and fair trade. And I think that those are conversations that are ongoing in the administration with the administration and the government of India. And I think that those conversations will help um, um, chart the path for how to move forward uh, on India's interest. Um, India's interest is one that I think we welcome strongly, and I've certainly heard that not only from our president, but from across um, all of the levels of our, of our government. Uh, with respect to uh, the bilateral investment treaty, we have um, long maintained that a high standard uh, bilateral investment treaty between our two countries would greatly advance uh, and facilitate additional American investment into India and would create a level playing field for American companies um, and for American investment um, so that there are the necessary uh, safeguards and protections for that investment. And I think that that will go a great deal towards enhancing confidence uh, in uh, 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 amongst investors in India's economy and will facilitate uh, greater investment flows. We're already starting to see that uh, U.S. investment is starting to flow towards India. And in fact, uh, India became, surpassed China as the largest uh, destination for um, some segments of American investment. And we're likely to see that trend continue. Um, we are in the midst of um, discussions on the bilateral investment treaty to en ensure that there is a firm commitment on both sides to be able to address some of the areas of, of discrepancy between India's model bit and, and what we see as a high standard uh, investment treaty. And we're hopeful and confident that, that those uh, discussions can lead to the uh, formal launching of, uh, of negotiations. So we're just really in the uh, position right now of starting the dance. Um, you know, I, I know there are serious issues. I, you know, I, I mentioned in my opening remarks concerns about allowing us to sell on the Internet to individuals. Uh, right. Amazon's had some real uh, issues uh, in India, and I'd like to get those resolved. I know we've had some agricultural uh, issues that, uh, you know, have, have been stumbling blocks in the past. And I also know that, and I don't know whether this completely applies to bilateral investment treaty, but a lot of our uh, U.S. investors and companies that do business in India are really concerned about the length of time that contract dispute resolution 
uh, gets done, gets handled. The average time in court is about four years, and that's just not acceptable. Um, I know they're trying to move toward arbitration, but I don't want to belabor that, but I know that there are several issues. We're very interested in moving forward. I think there's a lot of support in Congress. I know that there are issues, but, you know, while doing it thoroughly and effectively, love like to also add expediently uh, to the list because I think it's incredibly important that we further that relationship. And the last issue I'd like to just bring up is, again, India. But uh, when we had the uh, full hearing um, a couple weeks ago, I was a very loud voice uh, about the potential sale of uh, F-16s to Pakistan. India has objected mightily to this because there's big fear that uh, – uh, or concern that they might use those F-16s against India. Um, and it looks as though that sale is, is kind of uh, in limbo right now. Could you kind of clarify to me where that might be or um, what your thoughts are on that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, let me just start by saying that we have a very important relationship between the United States and India. Um, and we also have a very important relationship between the United States and Pakistan. Uh, each relationship stands on its own merits and is in furtherance of our uh, goals and interests um, with both countries. And we don't see them uh, in any way as being zero sum. Um, the F-16 platform is one that we have felt has been used uh, successfully in combating terrorism. And that has been the basis on which the administration put forward the notification to provide an additional eight F-16s. However, we understand the very serious concerns that have been raised by Congress, and, uh, and those concerns are right now um, being taken into consideration. And uh, um, so I don't have an update for you on, on with respect to that notification and, and where it goes, but I will say that we have recognized the, the concerns that Congress has raised with us. In fact, I, I'm just going to say one last thing and then hand it over to Mr. Sherman, but I, I do believe that the administration has listened to what Congress said. I believe you are uh, trying to be responsive, and I want to compliment you for that, because there, it, this was across the aisle. This wasn't just Republicans or Democrats. This was across the aisle, a lot of concern that was expressed, and uh, to its credit, the administration, um, I believe, is taking those things into account, and I want to thank you for that.